is our lifeblood. Food is the source of all energy in our bodies. It is responsible for how our bodies and our minds function. Many of us take food for granted though. So what is food? What is this fuel that we put into our bodies? I admit, I think about food a lot for a lot of reasons. First off, I eat it. Second, it's my occupation. But also, I think about the food system that I have inherited. And I think about the food system I'm about to pass on to that next generation. This picture here, this is my son, Ashton. And thinking about food thinks about what, what is that transition? What is our role, my generation? What are we going to pass on to the next? Modern consumers now, what do you typically expect when you walk into a supermarket? You want your food to be safe, nutritious, high quality, inexpensive, and presumably instant, ready to eat. As you push your shopping cart down each aisle, every item that you put into your cart, you're making an agreement with farmers, ranchers, and dairy producers. Whether you know it or not, you've just made this invisible contract. It is a contract where you cannot read the fine print. When you think of visible contracts, a few examples would be purchasing a house or maybe buying a car. You're gonna do your homework first. You're gonna do a lot of research first before you make such a large investment. And oftentimes, you're gonna sit there with all the papers in front of you, pen in hand, you're gonna read all the fine print. So when you think about fine print for food, what do you think? What, do you, what, what can you find? You look to the food label, of course. What kind of information can you derive from that? You may find an expiration date, you know, lot number. If you're lucky, you're gonna find a website, maybe a phone number. Website's gonna give you generic information, and the phone number's just gonna be a dead-end call to some public relations firm. Having this invisible contract also has a negative effect on agricultural producers as well. There is no accountability on behalf of the producer. There is this entire disconnect from the consumer. It's as if there's this large barrier separating the two. As a consumer, if you're not happy with your product that you purchased from the market, how can you get your uh, comments back to the producer? It's essentially impossible. My family and I, we are owners and managers of a local beef operation. Many in this room have probably eaten some of our product before. We raise our own feed, we process our animals ourselves in a USDA inspected uh, beef processing facility. We supply markets locally here in Shasta County. We also sell a lot of beef down in the Bay Area as well. We make visible contracts where we like to emphasize the fine print. We supply food to many different communities and in doing this, we're supplying food to our neighbors, our friends, and our families. We have to stand behind our product. One thing with our beef processing facility, we have an open door policy. And let me, let me repeat that. We have an open door policy in a beef processing facility. That is very unique, very odd to see in today's modern agriculture. But the thing is, we're proud of what we do. We're proud of the products that we produce. Our doors are always open to reporters, cameras, and authors. I'm about to show a video here that explains some of this fine print that I speak of. Some people in the room may be a little squeamish, may, uh, but what I'm gonna show is essentially a video of what you would find in an old-fashioned butcher shop. So if you want to take a step back in time with me a bit, here we go. This is here in our uh, Bella Vista Ranch, just about 10 miles east of town. This is our beef processing facility. This is the fine print, fully transparent. This is a HACCP card with a lot of the individual animals' records. <coughs> and this is our cutting room. Here's Jeff right here, cutting off a skirt steak of this animal. 
Here's Corinne running the vacuum seal machine, preparing product to get boxed and shipped to market. Here's uh, our ground beef machine. Basically, these are two and a half pound uh, patties, essentially, of ground beef. Here's Corinne putting labels on the packages. So there it is. There's the fine print. We're about to enter this evening into a contractual agreement, you and I, if you're interested in eating some beef. So there's the fine print. Are you willing to sign on the dotted line? How about some more fine print? That animal you saw in the cutting room, that was animal 10 It was born August 15, 2010, in the Fall River Valley. The animal was branded October 25th, 2010. The animal was moved down to the Newville Ranch, which is down on the Glen and Tehama County border. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the winters in Fall River Valley, probably wouldn't want to be a, be a cow spending the entire winter there. So we, we move them down to a southern climate and where they stay on green grass year-round. The animal was moved up to the Prather Ranch headquarters July 6, 2011. The process. Animal was processed January 10, 2012. It weighed 1,075 pounds. It was cut and packaged January 24th. January 26th, it was shipped down to Oakland in our cold storage facility. And then the next day, January 27th, it was brought to market at the Ferry Building in San Francisco. Some of this animal was set aside for this evening. I personally delivered it to C.R. Gibbs, which is a local restaurant here responsible for the appetizers. I did that Thursday morning. Here is our market at the Ferry Building in San Francisco. All the meat ready for consumers. So there it is. There's the fine print. As I said, you have an opportunity to sign on the dotted line this evening. So as I said, when I think about this food system, I think about the food system that we need. We need a system with visible contracts. We need consumers to be more aware and more educated about their foods. We need consumers to have a connection to where their food comes from. Consumers also are in control and they can demand a higher quality product. Think of a tomato that wasn't picked green, ripened artificially, and doesn't taste like cardboard. <laughs> this food system that I envision also supports our local community. It supports people down the street raising vegetables, the local farmer, making these connect connections is paramount to moving our food system to the next level. When I think about the information that we need on a food label, I think we need meaningful information. Uh, we just watched a video earlier and with the, with the fellow of the camera and going into the supermarket. We could do this with food. You could have a smartphone app. You could have a link to a webcam of the farm that you're purchasing this product from. You can have a link to a webcam of the processing facility. We also need a system that's going to improve our health, not cause the health crisis that we see today from the foods that we eat. Producers also have a role in this system. They're held accountable. Producers can take pride into consideration and actually produce a quality product. I personally, as a producer, I don't want to grow a commodity and compete with farmers from across the world. I want to grow food for my community. I don't want to live on government subsidies and government payments. I actually want to sell a product for what it's really worth. And you know what? Consumers are going to be happy to pay for it. I envision that we're going to have a real food system. I want to grow real food and I want to sell it to real people. I want a real connection. I want to make the invisible <coughs> visible. Thank you.